post-practice for you, given the deadline is so close, does anything change for you? Are you around with Chuck and management to kind of go over things? We've gone over what we need to go over. Are you expecting some decisions probably to come down soon? I guess kind of as a follow-up with that, as a coach, at this point, you know, obviously you have to deal with our questions, but are you just kind of looking forward to this being done, the deadline, I mean? Yeah, I, I don't uh, – it, it – doesn't affect me. It, it, who it affects are the uh, if, if some guys are going to get moved, the, especially the guys with expiring contracts. Those are the guys you always talk about. It's them thinking about what they're going to do with their families, this, that, the other thing. Me, it's another day at the office, getting ready to play. And uh, if if they have questions, I'm there for them to answer questions as far as where everything sits, all that. But um, doesn't really affect me. Uh, I, I just have a tremendous amount of respect for the players that have to think about it, and, and I try to help them as best I can. Do you see them in maybe locker rooms that you've coached have a sigh of relief after this? Um, depends what situation you're in. You know, we're um, we're selling. Uh, I, I, you're in locker rooms when you're trying to get there and, and get better. I think that's a whole different type of situation. Uh, but this has been talked about. Guys know what their contracts are. Uh, the guys know that could be moved. Um, they're pros. They're adults, and they just go about their business. John. Patrick Brown is uh, coming back from injury, and he's established himself here as a pretty good uh, special teams player and so forth. What have you seen from his game? He just seems like he's one of those guys you'd like to have. In the locker room. Uh, plays hard. Um, a penalty killer, face-off guy. Uh, he's been okay. I wouldn't say great, but okay. And uh, but the thing I always respect about Brownie is he, he he's always ready to compete. And uh, uh, as we're trying to build the standard here, um, he has stood in there in that part of it. That's for sure. John, um, we obviously talked to Chuck earlier this week, and we talked to him a little bit about Kevin Hayes. And he admitted that you know Kevin, because of his age, might not necessarily fit the, the the timeline. I guess where do you see him? Obviously, you know he's playing on the wing this year. It's been an odd year, but he scored a ton. Do you still think he can fit the, the timeline for when you guys contend? Uh, it, it depends what you know. It, I think a general manager. I don't want to speak for Chuck. I I think you're always trying to improve your team. Okay, and uh, when players uh, are getting up in in the 30s. And we're in this process here, trying to get younger, but also try to stay competitive while we're doing that. Uh, his name has to be brought up, uh, has to be talked about. So, um, is it? I guess that's the best way of putting it. You have to listen. You, you have to explore. Uh, I've been very honest with Kevin as we've gone through here. You guys think we argue, but we don't. We've 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 handled ourselves as as two men just speaking on situations, whether it be his play, whether it be the deadline, uh, where he fits. Th those have been honest conversations between him and I. Um, so again, I don't know where it all goes. Uh, Chuck hasn't talked to me about anything with Kevin uh, uh, to this time, but his name is certainly in conversations just because of where we are in the process and where he is in his career. How does the, the flip side of that might be somebody like Obviously, the team, you know, you're, you're not worried, you're not thinking about him in the same way you would a 30 year old mm -hmm. player of any kind, and certainly not given the position he plays. Mm -hmm. do, do you, as a coach, look for, I don't know, maybe every player is different, but look for signs of like, not fatigue, but like the toll of a grind? Ah, does that, does that you guys matter? talk him into being tired. <laughs> you do, especially goalies. Uh, I, I know it's a different position. Uh, we we really work at and concentrate on our schedule as far as rest for our team. Well, I'm almost I'm not even talking about physically so much yeah. as I am like, you know, he's 24 entering the prime yeah. of his career. Yeah. And maybe came in the league thinking by this time, um, I'd be in a club that's competing for a Stanley yeah. Cup. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, do you have to work on him at all in that regard? Manage as far as like mental approach, as staying sharp, as as understanding that he's part of he's whatever been, you guys. Are he's doing. been aces this year, yeah. as far as his preparation, 
uh, how he handles himself. Uh, uh, a, a kid that came in early, and for me, maybe too early at certain time, at a certain time in his career. When I'm not sure all the situations going on here at that time, with you, with this city of goaltending problems. Um, but nah, he is. Uh, I he, I don't even think of that because I, I think he's handled himself as a pro. He's been uh, consistently probably our best player. Uh, throughout the year, uh, that doesn't even cross my mind. He has been uh, uh, a great professional and his preparation is impeccable. Going back to Kevin Hayes, when you were first hired here, you talked about the players that you were most looking forward to meeting and you just mentioned that you were looking forward to working with Kevin and you, you saw that he was an important piece up the middle of the ice for the team. I guess to now be in this place for you where you're talking about the prospect of him potentially getting traded in the future may not line up with the timeline of this team. How? Frustrating or disappointing is it just to have that conversation? No, it, it, it isn't frustrating or disappointing. It is what it is. Uh, I am, I will not lie to a player. Uh, I won't. They they don't deserve that. And um, uh, Kevin and I have gone round and round. He sat one game. Was it one game? Moved him to wing. Uh, uh, he hasn't been happy at certain times and he shouldn't be. If you sit out a game, you never should be happy. I'd worry if you were happy or accepted it. Um, I'm sure has different thoughts about some of the, some of the positions I put him in, the ice time, all that comes with a player. Um, but we, we've talked about it and uh, have had very honest conversations about his mindset, about where I'm at, where I'm at with him. Uh, so there's, there's no, there's no gray area there between Kevin and I as far as what I think uh, about where we are as a team, uh, how it affects him. Um, and I make sure in that because I don't think a player should be held in a area of, of what's going on. And uh, yeah, so especially with Kevin, because we've had a number of conversations about this subject, you know, where he sits with the team. Is he part of it? Is he not? Those conversations will stay between Kevin and I, but I have been uh, totally upfront with him. In terms of kind of where he's come from that point to where he is now, do you see him as part of the long-term solution here as well? I'll put it to you this way: I I, I think Provy, um, I, I I think he has been really good. Uh, I uh, when I first started coaching him, uh, I'm sure. He doesn't like some of the things that have gone on as far as conversations at certain times this year, which is, to me, it's it's just another day at the office when that happens. It, I think if there's honesty, honesty between a player and a coach, there's always going to be disagreements. But as long as you handle it the right way, saying it to person, saying it to the person, and him saying it to you, whatever he needs to say, which he has and which I have, then let's go. And I think he has played. He, he's been a great competitor, uh, has handled a lot of things that we've asked of him, has uh, begrudgingly and, and probably is still upset of some things that have gone on, but he goes out and plays every night. So I don't have one problem with the way Provy's handled himself this year and how he's played. Uh, so these, I'm not sure where it's all coming from here as far as his name being popped up. Uh, he's been a huge part of this team. He expressed frustration to you about where things had gone, and are you confident that you guys are kind of getting it on the right path again? Who, where, where the team is? Yeah. Hey, I, I haven't talked. I don't talk to the players as far as uh, they they know what the process is. They they know how I feel, how we have to do this. I've been very public about that, so they know that. But to sit with Provi and say this, this, and this. No, uh, it, that's not my job. Uh, Chuck is the general manager. I, I coach, I handle the locker room. I put players in situations in, in order to go through this process. But to, to sit down and break down the plan to each player, no. Uh, uh, the thing about Provy, he, he uh, you know, some of the situation that he was in, uh, you know, with, the, with this situation there as far as him not warming up, uh, he just plays, you know. There's, there's no nonsense to him. He, he's not. Uh, he doesn't care about the drama. 
he doesn't care about what you guys say. Yeah. He goes out and plays, and that's what I've, I've really, truly respected about him. And I wasn't sure when I first met him how it was, how he's going to handle my coaching. I don't think he was sure. Uh, I, I think there's been a little roundabout way we've gone through it and, and gone through some situations. But I know each and every night he puts a uniform on, that we're going to have no problem with his compete and how he's going to play. And that's what I truly respect about him. How do you decide when it merits a one-on-one conversation versus letting them work through it themselves? Yeah, it hasn't been many one-on-ones. Um, uh, sometimes they just manufacture, uh, skating around. Uh, I'm not a big one-on-one -on -one guy in the office. I think it, it's the wrong setting to sit at a desk. I'm the coach, you're the player, and let's talk. I, I, I'd rather do it on the boards, uh, uh, maybe uh, in the hallway, maybe in the weight room. Uh, I think it's better that way. I, I think it's more an even plane uh, where I think the player feels uh, freely to speak. Uh, see, that, that's the thing. I. I think I sometimes get put in a box. And it's my way or the highway. It is the absolute opposite. I want the information. I want the player to have the opportunity uh, to express himself. Then I get to understand him better, especially my first year being here. Um, does it cause conflict at times? Absolutely. Uh, but I, I, I think it's healthy. And uh, so not a lot of one-on-ones, a uh, couple on the ice. Sometimes a player does want to initiate the one-on-one, -on -one, and I am more than willing to sit anywhere he wants to. And so I kind of leave it up to them if they want to do that. I, I just believe in uh, my coaching style. I like doing it right out in the open uh, because when you're coaching you, I'm also coaching all of you. And I think that's, uh, I, I think we're a group of men together uh, for the common goal, and we sh nothing should be hidden. It should be all transparent, so we do it out front. Speaking of the trade deadline, generally, Owen Tippett now has been here for almost a year. How much, and he's early in his development, and he has a long way to go in his career, but how much is his case and his story an example of like the, just the benefit of having a fresh start somewhere else? Yeah, yeah. I, I think he, and again, I'm not sure what happened in Florida, but I think he got lost there a little bit, uh, maybe through personnel. Uh, um, uh, I'm, I'm not sure how many games he played in the minors and all that. I, uh, but w what you see from Tip is he's earned it. Uh, I mean, I played him 25 minutes last night, played him 18 after two. Um, as I said last night, he's looking at me wanting more. Uh, it, it's, a, it, it's a really good, uh, just a form of watching a player earn his ice time. Uh, watching a player just go about his business very quietly pretty quiet kid and just work at his game and I think he's beginning to find himself. I, the, the biggest improvement Tip has made for me and I've, I've ex expressed it to you guys is when he had a bad game, God did he have a bad game. You know, he, he just, I couldn't find him. Now when he's not dead on, it's you still can find him. You still see him. He's not, he's not exactly where you want to be and, and still hasn't learned the consistency and all that but he hasn't fallen off the cliff. I, I think that's a huge improvement uh, for a young man as he tries to find his way.